I really love coming to the annual conference of each year. It's a great annual ritual. And I love it partly, in fact, mostly because it's a chance to catch up with all of you, uh, some of you who I've known for many years, uh, but also to meet new people into the Clubhouse family. Because what keeps the Clubhouse project so exciting is the constant flow of new people bringing new ideas and to helping to share the Clubhouse ideas with more and more people around the world. But another reason, actually, I like that I look forward to the conference is it gives me some time to reflect upon the past year and to look forward to future plans. And when I talk with you each year, I sort of use it as a time to think about what are some of the important things that are happening in the world of young people and technology and community and learning. Uh, and I went back I, in thinking about today's presentation to look at some of the last few years. I saw that in 2009 I talked about computer clubhouses in the era of Obama. It was right after Obama got elected. And I saw that a lot of the things he was talking about, about sort of the importance of empathy and the importance of people being able to express themselves were things that were very close to the clubhouse spirit. And then the next year I talked about hanging out, messing around, and geeking out. Uh, this is a phrase from Mimi Ito about different styles of engagement. And we talked about ways that kids can get engaged in learning activities in many different ways. The next year I talked about wide walls for learning, talking about that it wasn't, it, in addition to be able to provide easy ways to get started with a low floor and the ability to do more and more complex things, high ceilings, it was also important to think of wide walls, to have many different pathways to allow different people to get engaged in learning in different ways. For those of you around, you remember we passed out little uh, Lego kits for building a duck and Everyone in the room built a duck out of like six pieces, but all the ducks were different. And we talked about the ways in which there were many different pathways for, for starting to engage with materials and learning. Then last year in Ireland, I talked about passion-driven learning and from the, the clubhouse idea that it's so important for, to enable young people to follow their interests, to follow their passions, and the best learning experiences come when you follow your passions. And then we also talked about some of my concerns in some of the current trends with things like gamification, of trying to turn everything into a game where you're awarded with prizes and badges and points, and how that emphasis on extrinsic rewards sometimes is at odds with the clubhouse idea of allowing young people to follow their own interests. As I thought about a theme for this year, a topic that came to mind was one that you see written about all the time these days. If you you know, read up on things about technology and learning, many people are talking about this idea of making and makers. Uh, so I decided to think about c computer clubhouses as maker spaces. Again, if you look around, you see things these days like Make Magazine, which has been growing and spreading the word about how everyone can become a maker and to design things and build things, and that part of the do-it-yourself movement. Uh, there are these events like maker fairs where people come together to make things together and share their experiences with making. And I think this trend sort of captures my attention because it does resonate so much with the things that all of you have been doing out in the world for all of these years. If we go back and look at the clubhouse guiding principles you know, that we you know, started 20 years ago, principle number one was about learning by designing the importance of providing opportunities to let people design things, create things, make things to express themselves. And I think we've always, you know, and again, all the principles are important, but this has always been one of the real core ideas of the clubhouse from the beginning. This importance of long before anyone was talking about the maker movement and, and maker fairs, the clubhouses were involved in, in helping young people become what now are called makers, and helping everyone become a creator, a designer, a maker. Uh, in fact, I was just talking to Natalie, we were reminiscing with the 20th anniversary about before the first clubhouse opened, when we were thinking about the name for the clubhouse. So before there was the name clubhouse, we were brainstorming about names. And for a while, the name I kept trying to play around with was, I said, we should call it the Make It Center, because I want people to be making things there. And Natalie was concerned that calling it the Make It Center, people might think of it as the Make Out Center. Uh, <laughs> So, and actually never really had the right feeling to it. So we, had, we, we knew we wanted something about to engage people in making, but we never came up with exactly the right wording for it. So I'm afraid the Make It Center never made it. So 
Uh, so the clubhouse came up as a name, and I think it's worked pretty well for 20 years. Uh, but I think even though making didn't get in the name, it's always been part of the heart of what the clubhouse is about. And I think it's worth stepping back and saying, well, why is it that we think that making is so important? You know, I think it is partly, and these are things that all of you know and experience all the time, that when people are making things, first of all, there's an opportunity to connect with your interests. People you can make things that are sort of meaningful to them and also meaningful to other people around them. When you make something, you can share the thing you make with others. So making is naturally a community thing because by creating something, there's then something to be shared. Uh, as you make things, it, it provides an opportunity for other people to give feedback and suggestions and to start conversations. So a lot of times, it's not just the thing that you make, but the conversation around the thing that you make that's so important. So we like the idea of making because it sparks people to start talking and sharing ideas and giving you know, feedback to one another. Uh, I think also we see that as you start making something, it's a way for you to play out the ideas that are in your mind. So it's not just making things in the world, but it's making ideas in your head. And there's this constant back and forth. You have ideas, and then you try to make something, and it doesn't quite fit your ideas. It works a little different than you expected. And then you have to revise your ideas, and you make new ideas. As you make new ideas, you then revise the thing that you're making in the world. And it could be anything, whether you're making you know, an artistic sculpture, or a painting, or an animation on the screen. It doesn't really matter what you're making, but as long as you're making something, it provides an opportunity to play out your ideas. And once you play it out, it gives you something to then play around with, not just in the world, but play around with in your head. So it, it opens up this type of playful activity of playing, with ideas, playing out your ideas and then revising your ideas over and over. So you make an idea, then you make something in the world. And that gives you new ideas to make, which gives you new ideas of things to make in the world. So by making things, it sets in, 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 it sort of sets in process that spiral of continually to you know, learn new things as you try out new things, experiment, take risks, make something, and keep revising and trying over and over. So it's both something of your own learning process, part of the community building. So we see it at the heart of what we see as the clubhouse spirit revolves around this idea of making. So from the beginning, clubhouses in many ways have been maker spaces. But I think it's worth stepping back now because there's so much excitement in the world these days about making and maker spaces. I think it provides an opportunity for clubhouses. First of all, there's a great deal of expertise in this room that can be shared with this broader community that's becoming interested in making. You know, there's a way that the clubhouse can help integrate in with this growing community and share the ideas of all the lessons learned in your clubhouses to help you know, inform some other people who are getting started but it also means that there's lots of other people that we can learn from as well. So these ideas about making, there's so many more people generating ideas that can inspire us to help sort of strengthen and deepen and continue the making spirit that comes about you know, in the clubhouses. So I really see it as a time for us you know, to be able to build on the strength that's already there in the clubhouse, but to integrate with a wider community and to be able to share both being inspired and being inspired by the broader community of makers that's being developed. So it's great, we already see around you know, the clubhouse community so many examples. You know, we saw in the acceptance from Faro de Oriente you know, some great examples of a maker activity and sort of making the jacket and making it come alive. And again, I think that's very much in the clubhouse spirit of bringing together unexpected things, some, regular, some everyday materials and some electronic materials to make new things and to innovate through making. And we see it there, but we see it all over. You know, when I was just downstairs in the project fair, you know, you see, you know, sites like the San Rafael Clubhouse has been a leader, you know, in, in setting up a maker space and having sort of a, a young, integrating with a young maker community and DIY activities and participating in maker fairs. So you see all the wonderful things that have come out and the leadership role that Sarah's taken in, 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 in helping to support those ideas. And I really liked as I was looking at the table downstairs that Sarah was showing some of the activities from San Rafael. And on one side of the table, there were some examples using some of the new advanced technologies 
of 3D printers and laser cutters. So you can see on the right-hand side, you know, that drawing was done on the computer and then etched out with a laser cutter. And then on the left-hand side, some objects, they were, they were 3D printed and some of them then painted. But in addition to using this, you know, new types of equipment and new machinery, there's also using the everyday materials. On the other half of the table, we see everyday materials from fabric to thread to copper tape uh, to then, you know, a step forward to LEDs. So all different types of things that come together, you know, for making. And I think that's also important to keep in mind. Sometimes if you just look at some of the headlines about the maker movement, something that gets the headlines are sometimes the fancy new technologies. And again, we all can get excited about fancy new technologies. And the place where I work at the Media Lab, there's lots of excitement about fancy new technologies. And there's always a next generation of 3D printers and laser cutters and new types of ways of personal fabricating. And I think that's important and that's gonna influence us over time. But we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there's making going on around us all the time. You don't have to have a 3D printer or a laser cutter to really get deeply engaged in exciting and innovative maker activities. Uh, that in you know, cultures around the world, making has been going on for centuries. And we need to build on some of those long traditions of making uh, that can still provide rich learning experiences. But then see how, can we, how we can you know, mix together with some of the new materials. So there's a way that making can bring together the old, the new, the traditional, the innovative to come together with creative new ways. So as I was talking to people the other day at the opening reception, I heard some great examples of this, of the making that's going on in clubhouses today. Uh, so I heard from the you know, clubhouses in Denver, uh, some of the making activities. So Fran sent me these. I was talking to Galen, who is, I guess is doing a DIY toys uh, uh, workshop on Friday with some others. And there, I saw some of the photos that they were doing of some of the making activities of some of the, you know, doing templates to, you know, to put things on fabric and, and, and putting together everyday materials along with some more advanced materials in a do-it-yourself way. Um, I also, I, I loved hearing about, Almitris was telling me about some of the activities that they were doing in Chicago, about doing marble roller coasters from everyday materials and then making dolls. I loved how she was telling me that, you know, the dolls, she wasn't talking about 3D printers and, or even LEDs. It was, you know, I think that the dolls, if I remember, were made from rolled up newspaper, bird seat, and pantyhose. <laughs> and, it, you know, for making, you use the things that are around. And it, I think these are sort of at the heart of what the maker act movement and the maker spirit is about, of seeing how can we make use of the things in the world around us to express ourselves in new ways, to create things that are meaningful to us, and to create things that are meaningful to others, to be able to sort of take our ideas. It's another way to give us a voice. At the clubhouse, we often talk about the importance of sort of giving young people voice, and making is a way of giving people a voice. And different people find their voice in different media. Some people will find their voice making animations on the screen, some in the music studio, some making dolls, some making you know, you know, pillows, some making jackets with LEDs that flash, some, make, some with using you know, 3D printers. So I think we need to find ways to see all different types of making to help all young people be able to find their voice. So as we think about how we might set up clubhouses as maker spaces, I thought it might be good just to share some ideas that we sometimes think about when we think about creating a space. And what are some of the ingredients? And of course, there's no one recipe for setting up maker space. But I sort of just want to share some of the different categories of ways that we think about some of the different components as we're trying to set up an environment to support making. As we know at clubhouses, there are many different parts to an environment. There's no one thing, no one component that makes a great clubhouse or makes a great place for making. There's many different ingredients. So I thought I would share about a few different things that we think about when we think about making a maker space. Um, and again, a lot of these are things that we see as we just go around to clubhouses. I sort of decided to put three different categories. There's some things about the materials that you have. There's also tools that you have, tools and equipment. And then there's support and facilitation to support the process. So I'll just say a few things about some things that come to my mind when I think about those different categories of creating maker spaces. So with materials, well, if you're gonna make something, you know, of course, you, you know, you, oftentimes you need some type of materials for, you know, some type of building materials. 
So many clubhouses have Lego bricks, and we've shared different types of Lego materials over the years, and we see lots of great Lego constructions, which is a type of making. But also wood and plastic and other building materials are part of, a, of providing opportunities for making. But sometimes when people think about making, they think too much in terms of sort of these engineered materials, you know, wood and, and pipes. I think it's also important to think about craft materials, the softer side of making. So we often, when we're doing workshops or setting up spaces, just as important of, as the Lego bricks or other you know, materials that we might have for building structures, just as important is the felt and the pom-poms and the googly eyes and different craft materials uh, that are used to sort of give the, the skin on top of the skeleton that you're building and, and different ways to be able to give a different texture to the creations that you're working on. Of course, these days there's more electronics move into making, uh, being able to put in you know, LEDs and a means of, of powering them. Now these have been around for a while, but there's always lots of new materials as well in the electronics realm. We see more and more clubhouses doing things with conductive threads, so you can sew a circuit into a fabric, or conductive ink, so you can draw a circuit on paper just, with, uh, just by drawing with a special pencil with conductive ink. So more and more ways to be able to have electronics mix in with the everyday materials. And then connectors. Sometimes people forget these, but a big part of any maker activity is how do you put everything together? Uh, so duct tape and glue guns. I mean, I think glue guns is one of the biggest things I felt was missing from my childhood. <laughs> so you know, in some ways, you know, glue guns now are pretty everyday and common, but we didn't have glue guns when I was growing up. And there's so many, you use glue guns for everything these days. Uh, so I wish I had a glue gun when I was growing up. I had to just make do with masking tape and scotch tape and Elmer's glue. Uh, but you know, I do think thinking about ways to sort of bring everything together is an important part. We often, when we set up a workshop, we'll often have a craft table, a building material table, and a whole table just for different type of connectors of how to bring everything together. There's also the tools that you use in order for working on the materials. So, you know, if you think of materials are more like the nails, the tools are more like the hammers. And again, it's not just a metaphor. You know, traditional materials like hammers and saws, I think, have a great place. Even though it's called the computer clubhouse, doing things in the physical world is an important part of you know, the way people you know, express themselves. And I do remember the early days in the, first in the very first computer clubhouse, when it was still at the computer museum in Boston, uh, there were a couple of colleagues of ours who were mentors, uh, Karen Wilkinson and Mike Petrich, and they were really passionate about having young people get engaged with physical world activities. So they brought in you know, hammers and saws and wood and, and just had kids building. I remember there were a lot of kids at the clubhouse. Some of the kids were already doing these incredible animations and using 3D you know, you know, imaging software, but it never hammered a nail into a piece of wood. And I remember Karen and Mike brought it in, and kids would just spend hours hammering you know, you know, you know, nails into wood just because it was this new experience uh, to, to make things. Uh, and, then, and things that they were shocked by. I remember they were making uh, something, and there was some, some metal pipe that Mike and Karen had brought in. And they needed a smaller piece of this metal pipe. And they said, well, I need a smaller piece. And Karen said, well, you, you, know, what, we just, you, know, you can saw it. And the, you know, the member said, you can't saw pipe. Uh, <laughs> You know, because you know, he had seen a saw and saw wood, but you know, it was still a new experience for him. And I do think this, you know, the same way that you can create on the screen, given the opportunity to start you know, creating things in the world is, can be an important part of the experience. Again, there's also new types of uh, tools, like the robotics kit that we work on a lot at the Media Lab. And I know that you know, we've, we've worked on at, at workshops with you at, at past annual conferences like the Lego Mindstorms and the We Do and the Pico Crickets that we've done at the clubhouses. That's another part of a tool for making. And then increasing their electronics kits. Uh, Arduinos or lily pad Arduinos that was created by my colleague uh, Leah Beakley. Uh, but there's a growing number of easier to use electronic kits. It used to be you need lots of sophistication to go and pick out the parts from a Radio Shack. Uh, but there's you know, more and more electronic kits now that allow you to get started in a very easy way uh, to, to make all different types of things with sounds and lights and in many different ways. And I think there's, it's another great area to explore. 
And of course, I include software and media kits as well. Sometimes in the maker movement, people do focus a lot on the physical side of making. But I do think you know, the, the fact that there's also a lot of software side making for clubhouses is also an important part of making. Of course, our Scratch software is part of that. Or another example I put up here is Mozilla has some great software tools now, Popcorn, for doing you know, video editing. So there's all different types of tools for making in the virtual world I also see as part of the maker movement or an important part of a maker space. And of course, we then try to bring these together, how we can weave together making on the screen and making in the world with combining Scratch with robotics and other things. And then, of course, there is personal fabrication I mentioned earlier. There's a lot of you know, exciting new innovations there. And these devices will become less expensive with time and more you know, you know, affordable with time. So there's already ways to people to get started. And I do think this will become more accessible over time. And it's great to start experimenting with those. And I've seen great things going on at many of the clubhouses getting started. But again, I did want to emphasize, I did earlier, even though there's a lot of excitement around these and if there's great opportunity, it's not the only pathway into making. Finally, I want to say some things about support. As we all know from clubhouses, the same way that with a clubhouse, if you just have a room full of computers, that's not a clubhouse. And a room full of computers and hammers and saws and electronics kits and robotics kits and craft materials and Lego bricks and wood, that also is not a makerspace or a clubhouse. We need to have the support structure to, to engage people in thinking in new ways, to support people in using it. Not just to learn how to use the materials, but how to think in new ways with these materials. So you know, with support, part of it is looking for tutorials and examples. And there's a growing collection online. Websites like Instructables have great examples of DIY activities or books like from Klutz that give you ways of making uh, in the physical world. Of course, mentors, clubhouses, we know the importance of mentors, but there are also good connections. This is a place where you can make connections with the broader maker movement. You know, there's a new uh, organization called the Maker Education Initiative. I know this was circulated on some of the clubhouse mailing lists, and they started a maker core of having people uh, during the summer to be able to come and help at community centers. I know some of the clubhouses have Maker Core members coming and uh, helping out this summer, summer with supporting different type of maker activities. So this is one example where I think there can be great collaborations between the clubhouse community and new organizations like the Maker Education Initiative. And then new communities. You know, there's the Young Makers community. As I mentioned, I know in San Rafael that the, the clubhouse there has had a strong connection with young makers and a growing number of, of different places around the country are starting young makers clubs. And it could be a place to, to share with, to share what's going on at the clubhouse, to learn from other people doing young maker activities. And then also online, you know, the website DIY.org is a website for sharing make activities. And you can see it says, we're a community of kids who make. So it's a place where kids can share what's being made. So it's another place to be able to share ideas, to get ideas about what people are making these days. So I think these are all you know, some of the ways that we think about making makerspaces. And I think it's one of the you know, uh, opportunity in the years ahead for clubhouses to really, it's not really moving in a new direction. It's sticking with the original guiding principles of learning by designing. But there are a lot of new ways of learning by designing now. There are new materials that didn't exist 20 years ago. You know, when we started the first clubhouse, there wasn't conductive thread for sewing in circuits to fabric. Uh, there weren't 3D printers or laser cutters. Uh, so there are a lot of things that we can use now that just weren't around before, still in the same spirit, but enabling people to make new types of things. At the same time, there's new communities for us to interact with you know, that weren't around 20 years ago. So the maker movement is opening up lots of new people that we can interact with. So both new things to create and new people to share ideas with. I think are, are the opportunities for clubhouses as we look to the future and try to see how we can really take the, you know, the original core principles of the clubhouse and stretch them in new directions. I want to spend a little time talking about some of the things we're working on at the Media Lab to help support the maker movement. So as you know, one of the projects, and I mentioned it last year at the annual conference in Ireland, that a couple of the graduate students in our group 
uh, Jay Silver and Eric Rosenbaum developed this project, Makey Makey. When I talked about it last year at the annual conference, it was still just a research project at the Media Lab. So in the past year, they had a Kickstarter campaign last summer. They got lots of attention. They turned it into a product. And then at this year's annual conference, I know every clubhouse is getting a copy of Makey Makey. So we're really excited to see what you can do with Makey Makey. And we've seen that lots of clubhouses have already been getting Makey Makeys and doing interesting things with them. I know when I just talked at the opening reception, I saw you know, from the Unity Clubhouse you know, in Utah some great you know, maker activities in this, in, in with, with Makey Makey, in this case, controlling a piano you know, with the Makey Makey. Or in New Zealand, uh, another a, a drum set that was made using Makey Makey. And we've seen, as often happens, whenever we make new technologies, whether it's Scratch or uh, We Do or Makey Makey, it, we, always, it's, we love to see all the creative ways that people use the technologies that we never imagined. And of course, that's happened again with Makey Makey as well. I'll just show a few short video clips of a few ways that people, this isn't at clubhouses, but other people who abuse Makey Makey and put videos online so we see how other people are starting to use Makey Makey. So this is using different fruit and vegetables for playing music. Well, here's another one with music, just with sketches from pencil. And actually, yeah, this was at a station with Intel. Again, this is a nice crossover point with Intel. With, you know, Intel's been such a strong supporter of the clubhouse, but also been a very strong supporter of the maker movement. In fact, Jay Silver, one of the co-creators of, of Makey Makey, is now working at Intel and, and it is sort of one of the people there who is helping to spread the maker idea and, and looking for new ways of connecting with makers and providing new types of tools and opportunities for makers. One more video I'll show. This is one where uh, it's completing a circuit in a novel way by kissing. <laughs> so this is a game, sort of like Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> you have to time your kisses. <laughs> so you see there's lots of creative ways of using Makey Makey that we never imagined. Since you all have the Makey Makey kits now, uh, I thought it would just spend a couple minutes. I know that some of you already have done wonderful things with Makey Makey, but since it's new to some people, I thought I would just spend a few minutes just showing you a little bit about Makey Makey to make it easier to start. I know there's some sessions, and some of you will be going to a post-conference workshop that Eric Rosenbaum's running on Thursday. But just to show you a little bit about getting started so you get a sense of Makey Makey, you know, this is the board that you will have gotten, and it just plugs into the USB port of the computer. And then you can, basically the idea is you can use this board, it takes the place of your keyboard on the computer. So anything that you can do on the keyboard, you can now do with Makey Makey by completing a circuit. So completing a circuit with Makey Makey is the same as pressing a key on the keyboard. Just to show you what I mean, like you can use this with any software. I'm happening to use Scratch because I happen to like Scratch, <laughs> but you can use this with any software. Uh, and I'll show like in Scratch, if I make something that makes a sound, oops, I'll take a sound block, like here's one, I'll choose like a cymbal sound, crash cymbal. 
So if I click on the block, I get a, a, a sound. I'm going to put on what we call a hat block for triggering it. A, and I'll say, when the space bar, the space key is pressed, it should play the drums. So now when I hit the space bar, it plays the cymbal every time I hit the space bar. But since the makey makey can imitate a keyboard, I'll now do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these cables that comes with makey makey, and there's a place here that says space. So I'm going to clip this on to where it says space. So it will now act as a space bar. And I'm going to connect it to a, 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 a Pi 10. So basically, you can use anything that's conductive, anything that conducts electricity. So now I have, then I have another cable that's connected to a part here that's called ground or earth. So you have to make a circuit. So with the makey makey, this part is connected to ground. The, tie, the pi tin is connected to the space bar input. So now if I complete the circuit by touching the pi tin, I've made the circuit. Um, so now part of this is, and one thing that might not be obvious to people, this only works if there's a circuit that conducts electricity. Since my body's in there, that means my body conducts electricity. So that's one thing a lot of people don't realize, that electricity can flow through the body. Now again, it's not dangerous. There's very little electricity. But I'm part of the circuit now for making it. So actually, I might want to actually have some animation that goes with it. So in fact, instead of having the cat there, I'm going to go to the costumes. I'm going to find a different costume. This is from the costume library. I'll choose where it says things. And I happen to know there's a drum, so I'm going to choose the drum. And that's better. That looks a little more like what I want. And now, actually, when it plays the drum, right before making the sound, I'm going to tell it that it should grow the drum a little bit. So I'll say change the size by 20. Then it should play the drum sound. And then I'm going to have change the size by minus 20. So it'll re return to its original size. So right now, I'll try the, the space bar. And so it's a little animated drum. Try it again with this. So I have the drum going. But just having one drum, I want something a little more than that. So I'm going to add another instrument. So I'll take another cable. I'm going to plug it into the makey makey where it has the up arrow. So the easiest, there's, you can, the easiest thing to do with, with makey makey is to use the space bar and the arrow keys. You can use other keys also, but those are the easiest ones to use. So I'm going to click on the up arrow to another Pi 10. And for that, I'm going to make another sprite in Scratch. So this is how I make a sprite here, a new sprite. And now I'm going to choose, I noticed there was another drum. Where did I go? I think that's, yes. So now I have two drums. This drum, I'm going to tell this one that it should react when the up arrow is pressed. So I'll say when I press the up arrow, that I'm going to want to make a sound. And this time, instead of the cymbal sound, I'll do something different. Maybe I'll do a hand clap. So let me try that. Up arrow. Actually, that's not quite loud enough. Let me choose something else. Let me a snare drum. OK, that's good. And then we also, I'm going to give it a little better look. For this one, I'm going to say, before I play the drum, I'm going to give it a fisheye effect. And afterwards, I'm going to give it to return to the way it looked before. I'll give it a minus fisheye effect. So now when I hit the up arrow, actually I want a little more effect, so I'm going to change the number and make it a little bigger to give it a bigger effect. So I was just testing on the keyboard, but now I can test it with my drum set here. Oh, I, I have to complete the circuit. I forgot. I have to be holding on to ground with one hand. Oh. That should be working. Oh, maybe I, oh. The makey-maker was upside down. 
So I put it in the down arrow rather than the up arrow. <laughs> so that's debugging. But this is part of what it's about. And I do think this is an important part of making. Again, when I talk about the reasons we like making, this is actually exactly it. When you make things, you actually can see how, how your ideas play out. As I was saying before, I had an idea of how it was going to work. It didn't work as I expected it. So I then had to sort of revise my own ideas and then realize what was wrong. And although this is useful for, again, making, making scratch to work, but that type of systematic way of figuring out what's going wrong is something that you use in all parts of your life. So you now have, but I would do one more thing with this, but you couldn't do it with multiple people. So actually, I, I need a couple of volunteers. So Jeff, can you come, come and volunteer? Yeah. And let's get a hand for Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and Almitris, would you come as well as well? Yeah. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to want each of you to do is that actually, why don't you come up here on the stage so everyone can see you. Of course, each of you could just do the same thing I did before, and you could hold this. In fact, just to try it, Jeff, you hold this, and you could play each of them. OK. Oh, sorry. That's no, that's OK. <laughs> Don't get carried away here. <laughs> what I want to do now is I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to stand in the middle here. If you put one hand on here, and now if I just And if you put one hand on there, no. <laughs> now, some of you could probably do a little better rhythm than I can, but. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you can turn your clubhouse into a music, turn the members into a musical instrument. So thank you very much. So we're really eager to see what you do with Making Makey. I know that on the village, there's already some examples of Making Makey. We really hope, as you make use of Making Makey and other maker activities as well, that you'll share them on the village, because we'd love to see what you do. And that'll help influence us and give us new ideas of other ways that we can keep extending and improving and adding new features to it. So we really look forward to seeing you sharing it. I know it's great. I know that Sarah is now one of the Studio 52 fellows. So I know that she has a real interest in the maker side of things. So hopefully we can get lots of new maker activities going on the village. Just to end up, I'll show one more thing. As you might have noticed with as the Makey Makey example, uh, I was using a new version of Scratch. This is our what we've been calling Scratch 2.0. It's been a long time in the works. But we're finally going to be bringing it out just in a week and a half on May 9th, which is a week from Thursday, is going to be the official launch of Scratch 2.0. And our ideas on Scratch 2.0 have been influenced by things we've been hearing from clubhouses. Like I know that at some clubhouses there was a lot of interest in having you know, sort of more sophisticated graphics, of using vector graphics rather than bitmaps. So in the new version, you can have you know, nicer graphics that will scale nicely, have more of a flash-like look to it. And there are a variety of other new features that we hope will connect with, young, with you, some of the members of the clubhouses. Let me just show one example just to give you a sense. So this is the new home page of Scratch 2.0. So you can go through and see the featured project. And uh, if you take a look, you'll see interesting featured projects there. I'm going to pull up one of the examples we're going to be showing from the workshop. Actually, Natalie and I will be doing a short workshop this afternoon at 1.30 for those who are interested in learning more. One project we'll dive into a little bit more. I'll just give a sneak preview of here. This is a project that uses the camera feature. I showed this last year, but there's some new ways of using it. So here, you have to save the minifigs. So notice if I'm not there, they'll just fall all the way down. But I can save the minifigs. Oh. But one of the nice things with Scratch 2.0 is it's all, you can do everything right within the web browser. So if I want to say, well, how did they make this? I don't have to download it and open up an application. I can just say, see inside. And I could see you know, how it is that it's done. And in fact, if I want to make a change, like if I want to make it 
harder. Like this is where, this part says if the video motion is above a certain amount, then it should bounce up. So if I change that from 20 to 50, then I'll have to push harder in order for me to be able to, so now if I just stand still, they don't bounce. I have to really make a lot of motion now to sort of get them going. And of course, it's easy to remix things as well. So like if instead of having the minifig, I could just load in a new image. Oh, let's take a random image here. If I go back to the scripts. So now I have, oh, and these clubhouse. <laughs> and I think it'll be around, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. So again, you can grab different things from around the clubhouse. Oh, it's a little bit easier again. So again, you, know, you can grab different imagery, like the image that I just took from, this is from the 20th anniversary image. back and we can make it full screen so oh. <laughs> anyway so anyway so again although these types of things with scratch are all on the computer screen for me this is part of making as well so I think for young people growing up today they live in a world, as we all know, where part of their time is spent in, in virtual worlds, in digital worlds, part of the, in, the, in the physical world. I think as clubhouses, we want to help young people be able to express themselves in all different parts of their world. So that's what we're trying to do with some of our new tools, like Makey Makey and this new version of Scratch, but also sort of keeping you involved. You know, we use the camera because we want to let people not just sit at the keyboard and watch what's happening, get their bodies involved to engage in different ways. Some of these things are happening in games these days, like with Microsoft Connect. You can interact with the screen, but you don't get to make the games yourself. So again, the clubhouse spirit, we're always looking to see how can we let young people make things, both in the physical world and on the screen, so that they can really express their ideas and become, you know, be part of this broader maker movement and be able to grow up to really develop their voice and to be really full participants you know, in tomorrow's world. So thank you very much.